So the other day I was browsing through my external hard drive and I came across a folder which contained every vertical takeoff and landing project I've ever done. Now if you viewed through my channel or subscribed to me you probably would have seen my previous projects. Uh, that includes the version 1, the flying red and white bus. Uh, the version 2, the slightly scale looking profile uh, B-22 Osprey type uh, aircraft. And you probably would have seen that I've started the version 3 project at the moment. But there's one thing that I've never shared on YouTube, and I think it's time to share it. So the project was filmed back in 2014, and I have very limited footage and photos of it. So I'm going to try and explain the theory behind it, of why it did and didn't work to a certain extent. So with my other VTOLs, I used the bicopter configuration, and it worked pretty well. I had the motors mounted on the wingtips, and they would rotate on the same axis as the pitch. With the centre of gravity being lower than the motor pivot, when the motors would pivot forward and backward, it would actually pitch the aircraft up and down. However, with this aircraft, I thought I'll reverse it and I'll put the centre of gravity above the motor pivots. This means that the motor would have to rotate the other way to create the same moment. And as it was going to be an F-35, I thought it'd look a bit ridiculous with the motors on the wingtips. So I put the motors at the front and the rear of the aircraft. This means that when the motors rotated, instead of creating a pitching moment, because the motor pivot would be mounted on the roll axis, it would create a rolling moment. So enough of the theory aside, I'll show you the test rig that I put together. The test rig was comprised of two pieces of wood that I bought from a local hardware store, uh, three servos, a KK2 board, receiver and two speed controllers. The front motor was only set up to rotate on the roll axis, so during transition to forward flight it would just turn off. The rear motor would also roll on the roll axis for roll control during a hover, however it had a larger servo which would transition it uh, to face towards the rear for forward thrust in forward flight. So I know I ran that crash reel at the start of the video, but I'm pretty sure you want to see some more. So I'll show you how the test flights went. So before I show you it working, I just want to explain what's going on here. So if the aircraft wants to roll to the right, the motor actually has to rotate to the left, but the thrust is fired to the right. So when it's on the ground, this will essentially cause the aircraft to slide to the left. And when the aircraft slides to the left, the wheels grip into the ground and flips it to the left. So essentially on the ground, the roll control is actually reversed, which means the gyro, if it detects any kind of roll movement, will just flip it over. The only way to really counteract this uh, rolling issue where it just flips over is just to increase the throttle really quickly, get it off the ground and then let the gyros take over. So I'm going to show you a quick video of it actually working. So obviously after getting this to hover, I thought great, now all I've got to do is build a body around it, put some wings on it and it'll fly. So what I did is I researched some F-35 plans that I could build, because I didn't really know how to build an F-35 scale looking fuselage uh, out of sheet Depron. So I came across the RC Powers F-35 designed by Dave Powers, and I thought I'd have a go at giving that a build. I scaled up the plans, glued it all together, 
I didn't put the wings on because I just wanted to test it with a fuselage and this is how that went. So what I think was going on here was that the heavy fuselage then increased the inertia of the roll axis and the rolling moment caused by the motors and the gyroscopic inertia resistance uh, just wasn't enough to counteract the extra weight of the fuselage. So my next idea was to build a profile fuselage which would be slightly lighter and slightly easier to build and this is how that went. So it took a few attempts to get off the ground, but in the end it was a success. It was quite a bit less stable than without a fuselage due to the increased inertia. But if I kept it level and there weren't any gusts of wind, it could hover pretty good. As you can probably tell from the noise, it was a bit inefficient, but you know, it's only got to hover for a few seconds or so and then it transitions to forward flight anyway. So the next stage was to put some wings on it. Don't know why, but that crash is still funny. So this pretty much ended the project for me. I know I probably shouldn't have given up, but at the time I just, I couldn't get it to work. I know that a few years ago, uh, David RC Powers also attempted a similar setup. And I guess you could say I got a bit further because my test rig hovered, but I never got around to building a full aircraft to fly it with. I could have maybe got away with a short takeoff vertical landing aircraft, uh, where if I had large enough ailerons, it would assist the roll control but it would still never be a proper vertical takeoff F-35. Like it could never do a hover and then do a pirouette and fly backwards, etc. The only other thing that I could think of is that instead of having the motors on the roll axis, have them on the pitch axis. So instead of making use of the rolling moment, it would actually use more gyroscopic precession. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but quite a few bicopter configurations utilize this technique. But anyway, that's enough of the summary of my F-35 project. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, please leave a thumbs up as it really helps me out. And it'd be great if you could check out some of my other videos. If you just click here. And thanks for watching again. Goodbye.